in LA this week. You shouldn't have to wait for something to come out in the spotlight, but it just it has to stop. People don't have to come to a physical office. And what that's allowed us to do is reach actually a lot more people than we have in the past. And I think people who normally would not be engaged in our process. They're happy, of course. Um, and it just helps in these trying times to be able to have someone help me out with my dogs. Hello everyone, I'm Saida Pagan. Here's what's happening in LA this week. In the past few months, Los Angeles has seen a series of tense and troubling circumstances, an ominous pandemic, the crippling shutdown of our local businesses, big and small, and now protests demanding reform and equity for African-American citizens across the country. And in every instance, Angelinos have answered these challenges with optimism and action. One such organization was Union Carpenters, who came to the aid of businesses in downtown Los Angeles. Take a look. Everywhere we go! Everywhere we go! People want to know! People want to know! Who we are! Who, who we are! So we tell them! So we tell them! We are the Carpenters! We are the Carpenters! Mighty Union Carpenters! Mighty Union Carpenters! We reached out to our political allies and we say, hey, how can we help the community? Uh, you know, we have all the resources. We donated all the plywood, all the volunteers, all the carpenters came out here and we boarded up all the windows that still needed to get some boarding. Asked them if they'd come out and help us out with some of the broken windows, uh, some of the graffiti that was done. And uh, the result is that they've helped us board up some of those local businesses who have been broken into. So we're very happy about the partnership we put together. I wish that, that it could be a different way, but I understand, I don't condone, but I understand that these are people that feel that they don't have a, another voice. And they feel that this is the only way. Right now, we're just focused on trying to help the community heal, help the new community rebuild, and take care of what the, what the problem is at hand. I'm just trying to come out here and help the community get back on its feet. Brick by brick, uh, stud by stud, we're going to be right here um, contributing to our community because we live here. We stand shoulder to shoulder with our business owners, the mom and pop shops, uh, because we live here. We're part of this community. This is what we need to stand the strongest on the heels of a pandemic that, that is tearing apart our economy. We, we need help and we need those volunteers, those community angels. We build this community and we feel that we are the community here in Los Angeles. Don't lose hope have that strength to know that we're going to be good. That the only way we're going to get through this is by working together, and we wish for the best for Los Angeles. We either fall together or rise together, and we're going to rise. Union Carpenters! Union Carpenters! Hey! Yeah! The Department of City Planning continues its focus on development and growth in Los Angeles. Maria Hall Brown sat down with Vince Bertoni to discuss how plans to develop LA are moving forward. 469 square miles. That's a lot of space, and that happens to be the dimensions of the city of Los Angeles, and the person who is responsible for planning a lot of that joins me today. Vince Bertoni, the director of planning for the city of LA. Nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Have you seen things that you've incorporated into the planning department that you're thinking, even after all this is well, over, we need to keep this going? Right. Well, we've been really moving online. And, and operating online, and I really want to keep that, not only keep what we've done online, but keep on expanding it. Oh. I want to see us be able to operate so much of our interactions with everyday Angelinos, as well as all the other customers we serve online, so that people don't have to come to a physical office. And what that's allowed us to do is reach actually a lot more people than we have in the past, and I think people who normally would not be engaged in our process, because they wouldn't have the time to take off work take out of their busy lives. We've done a streamlined program where restaurants can actually dine outdoors in places that previously weren't allowed. So you can turn a parking lot, perhaps a sidewalk, and maybe part of a, a parking space that may be on the street into outdoor dining. 
The idea is to, to keep this through um, the COVID-19 crisis now. We want to make sure that we can kind of keep the, the economy moving forward. But we have to do that in a way that understands the needs of our communities. Local and state leaders are continuing to reach out to residents of LA, bringing hope and help whenever they can. Congresswoman Maxine Waters brings face masks to a forgotten community, and council member Curran Price speaks with young Angelinos about the ongoing protests. She called me and she said, Doug, we got to figure out a way to get masks out to all the public housing residents in the city. Do you think that's possible? He called me and said, I got the mask. He was able to get 25,000, is it? 25,000 and more coming. I should announce that we're expecting another shipment of 25,000 more masks. I have a mask. Thank you. So that when you go out, you protect it and you protect others. Hello. Aquí es tu masca. Oh, muchas gracias. I need three. We are very pleased and proud that we have not forgotten our residents of public developments. We wanted to make sure that they have masks like others uh, perhaps have masks so that they could be protected and they could protect others as they go out to the grocery store and other places that they have to go. If you got somebody who needs a mask, you call us and let us know because we want everybody to have one. The Congresswoman's always on the right side of these issues. We're very happy that she raised this with us. This is thanks to, to her initiative. Let's come on to DC mask. Mascara. Mascara. Be sure to put it on when you go to the grocery store. Sometimes public housing is forgotten. And so I'm so pleased that Doug is a kind of leader that does not forget. Not let me see, let me figure it out. I got to talk to 10 people, none of that. He did it. I'm just happy that we could, uh, we could come through. Uh, it was the right, it's the right thing to do. Never before in my life uh, have I seen the convergence of uh, individuals coming together talking about the impact and the effects of racism and acknowledging it and figuring out where we go from here. And so this is an exciting time to be able to talk about these issues and to talk about them in terms of what can we do to solve the problem. Go ahead and raise your hand and, and I'll be able to acknowledge you because I know that you have some very important things that you would like to get across. Do you see any differences from the right, race rights back in the 60s compared to now? This time, it's a more multicultural, multi-ethnic uh, discussion, multi-generational. Why do you personally think this generation of youth decided to fight back as hard as we have compared to other generations? Oh, interesting. Yeah, good, good question. Well, I think, first of all, this generation is, is much more informed. How many of you have had either a negative experience or an uncomfortable experience either personally or a family member or in your community with uh, an incident with a police policeman. We shouldn't have to wait for some things to come out in the spotlight when it just it has to stop. I think that we have to listen to the black community and we have to support them. How legislators can kind of more so focus on the voices of the youth and have more platforms like this one. You do represent the best of us. Uh, I, I'm excited to, to know of your enthusiasm, your interest, and your commitment. We're counting on you, counting on you to make sure that this is not just talk, uh, but that we put the kinds of programs uh, in place that are going to make a difference, that can impact the lives of not just you, but your kids and beyond. Councilmember Mitch O'Farrell teamed up with Rick's Market to bring fresh produce to residents of Council District 13. Check out this giveaway. So this is 
one of the weekly distributions uh, that is co-sponsored by my office and the East Hollywood Neighborhood Council and Rick's Produce Market. There are all sorts of fresh produce uh, and fruits and vegetables and uh, fresh market eggs as well. Keeping people fed and housed is the basic goal, the basic objective uh, of the entire city. And so that's part of this effort as well. We actually have been selling at the Silver Lake Farmer's Market for over 13 years now. We're here, you know, helping out uh, whoever needs help. Now, sometimes at the markets, it's a full of people, and you need to make a lines. And at my age, I'm a, a high risk, so this event helped me a lot uh, to come and take some a box of uh, vegetable, fruit, and eggs. I've met amazing volunteers that are willing to sacrifice their health to help others. I really want to work with people like that. Dozens and dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of similar events are going on throughout the city. Beyond all of the noise and all of the difficulty um, are real people doing real things to help one another. Mayor Garcetti and local health officials have made access to COVID-19 testing a priority across the Southland. Council member Marquise Harris Dawson has recently brought the antibody testing to Council District 8. Take a look. Today here at the um, YMCA on Vermont Avenue, um, my COVID-MD has taken over the parking lot to offer free uh, COVID testing. We are bringing testing into communities that are in crisis so that we can reach people who might be feeling angst, nervous, they don't have a doctor to go to or the money to go get a private test done. Councilmember Harris Dawson has partnered with the YMCA to put together this testing site. It's the first site that we have in our district that will be free and accessible for the public. But unlike the other testing sites, this particular testing site will be testing for antibodies. The only test that exists right now for COVID that really helps to inform the community how to mobilize and open up doors is antibody testing. So we want to give the best options and the best opportunity for our communities to make informed choices by giving them the best tests that are available. We do pinprick testing, and then we, with that drop of blood, within 30 minutes, we can tell you what your antibody status is. We needed to not overburden the hospital systems and the ERs. Many of the people coming through our testing sites would use the ER as their doctor. They're either uninsured, they're underinsured, they don't know where to turn. There's minimal contact between staff and the actual individual getting tested, and in every step of the way, everybody is completely protected. We have grocery giveaways, DJs, we have um, LA Grind is here giving away coffee and tea. So we try to make it really a community centered event so that people know they can come here, get testing and have it be a positive experience, but also be able to find out results that they need to know to get back to work. Being empowered to know your status is amazing. It, it just lifts you from a different place. The city attorney decides against prosecution for protesters. June is Refugee Awareness Month. All this up next on City Beat. LA City Attorney Mike Fewer and District Attorney Jackie Lacey have announced that their offices will not be prosecuting any of the peaceful protesters who were arrested recently. City Attorney Fewer released a statement saying, because of the focus created by the peaceful protesters, we have a rare opportunity to change hearts, minds, and institutions. It can no longer be us against them. Charges such as failing to disperse and violating curfew will be thrown out. Thousands have been arrested in LA since the death of George Floyd. June is Refugee Awareness Month and authorities are highlighting job assistance programs available in LA County. Over the past five years, nearly 5,000 refugees from more than 30 countries have settled in LA County and these career programs are used to help in starting new lives. Vocational skills training, English learning, and job placement are all available. For more information regarding these programs, visit dpss.lacounty.gov.
By now, we all know the symptoms to look for with the COVID-19 virus. The organization Friends of West Los Angeles has loaned its local police station a valuable tool in detecting potentially sick visitors. Take a look. So Friends of West LA has allowed us to borrow uh, one of their thermal imaging cameras to allow us to scan all of our employees and all personnel and all arrestees that enter this facility uh, through our one uh, door in the rear of the station. And what it does is it scans their body temperature to see if they have a temperature that would be consistent with COVID-19. Friends of West LA predominantly works in the west side. Um, and before COVID started, we were helping with uh, police, fire stations, recreation centers, parks, schools and libraries in the west side of LA. And so in response to the virus, what we wanted to do is help our first responders in this time by allowing them to be more safe when they're interacting with each other and people that do come into the station. If they do have a 100 degree temperature, it sets off an alarm in our watch commander's office and our watch commander will get up and determine who is setting that alarm off to be able to do a secondary temperature reading with a manual temperature. We want to just find best ways to mitigate anyone getting sick and if this camera can help with this station in particular with anyone coming in being able to determine if they have a fever then that would be a good example for the city to take in to install these cameras in other stations or work with our organization to do that. The weather has gotten hot quickly in LA, but the need for prepared meals has in no way diminished. The organization Making It Happen Inc. in Sunan Tahanga is still on the job providing meals for those who need it most. Today is meal day. We do 200 meals. We used to do a sit-down dinner in here, but since the epidemic, we do drive-through. People are smiling. They're, they're so grateful that you're, you know, they're doing something, you know. It, it's kind of like a my peer group, kind of. <laughs> you know, I know a lot of people out here, and um, it makes them feel good, and that makes me really feel good. It really does. We have a table outside. People will come through the drive-through and we will see how many meals they need. We also have a van that goes out and delivers to our homeless community out in the park in different locations that we're aware of. We also go into the local trailer parks here and have a couple of key women that we bring dinners to and then they distribute throughout their park. And then lastly, we have a delivery list and we deliver to families that aren't able to get here. I just love helping people. I know that I've been um, in a place in my life where I needed help and so just giving back, I feel like I'm stronger than I've ever been and I just get to give back and it just makes me feel good. When I was hungry, when I was homeless, this meal fed me and it was the only hot meal I got a week. And now that I've been running it since 2007, I want people to be satisfied and to enjoy that meal because it's usually the best meal that they receive. It's all about loving one another and just, just being there for one another. Okay, it's time for the puppies. There's a drive through just for kitties and pooches and their loving owners. The LA Department of Animal Services brings you pet food pantries. Check this out. So LA Animal Services opened the pet food pantry today in order to be able to help the community who are, you know, having issues with being able to feed their pet. 
Um, we wanted to create the Pet Food Pantry to be a resource for the community because we know with COVID-19, there was a lot of uncertainties and so feeding your pet shouldn't be one of those things that you know, you're worried about. I heard about it through a, an, an email that I received from Council Member Mitchell Farrell. I, I'm originally from the Silver Lake area and I'm on his email list. Uh, I have two, two dogs, as you can see here, Willie and Sullivan, about 20 pounds each and they, they love both dry and wet foods. Uh, very, very uh, happy. Uh, they're happy, of course, um, and it just helps in these trying times to be able to have someone help me out with my dogs. Residents interested in participating in the Pet Food Pantry should go online at laanimalservices.com forward slash pet food pantry and there's information there to be able to register and make an appointment. What we found is, you know, we're fortunate that the city of LA is a, are people who love animals. Angelinos love their pets and so at this point when we actually, um, COVID-19 happened, we had a lot of people come in and want to foster and adopt. For those people who couldn't foster and adopt, they really wanted to find out how they can help the community, how they can help the pets and so we established the pantry and so this is one way for them to be able to help. This is the first time that we've done the program and we hope to continue it beyond um, COVID-19, beyond the pandemic, because we really did want to make this available to people in the community who need help feeding their pets. Well, it calls itself a full spectrum life safety agency. That's the LA Fire Department. What does that mean? Well, fortunately we have the expert to be able to explain absolutely everything. I'm delighted to be joined by Fire Chief Ralph Tarasas. Nice to have you with us. Thank you, Maria. It's nice to be here. What were the challenges that the fire department had to face when this whole virus became such a part of our lives? The COVID pandemic is something we had never experienced before. Uh, in early, mid-March, the mayor made the decision to begin public testing. And uh, as I thought about it, it's within our mission to protect lives and property. This is just a different perspective on how we save lives. So we immediately stood up our first testing center. And uh, now we have multiple test sites. Our most recent one was the Dodger Stadium mega site. We can process there up to 8,000 people per day. Basically, you were in charge of operations in regards to these testing centers and you helped staff them along with the medical professionals that needed to be there. The men and women of Los Angeles City Fire Department were on, on the ground floor. Our medical director was very uh, critical in determining what type of test, uh, how do we do it. The very first day, myself and the union president administered the test to the public. I wanted our firefighters to know that uh, it's safe to do it and I wouldn't ask our firefighters to do anything I wouldn't do. So here we are months later and we're still doing it. Okay, so now let's think about the future. What about fire camp? What about recruitment? What about academies? How is all that gonna play out? The brush season is rapidly approaching. The height of our season will be in September, ballpark starting September. And uh, we're all thinking about how do we uh, minimize the COVID threat at these base camps because we're gonna have hundreds of firefighters congregating there. So what we're going to do is maintain the distancing, the washing of the hands, the face coverings, the temperature checks, wiping down equipment and apparatus, but also think about maybe more than one base camp so you can minimize the number of people there. We'll be using those types of practices to minimize the further uh, spread of COVID. Well, Chief Drazis, thank you so much for sharing all this amazing information and best of luck and stay safe. Thank you, Maria. Thanks for having me. We're going forth with power and prayer in the word. Peace is going to be here. We ain't got to worry about it. We are going to already set the stage for a peaceful rally under the power of God. Come on out. Today we're having a unity march with LAPD. This may be the only march that I've heard of in the country where we're marching with the police to support our, our community. Here we have a very close relationship with the community. The community reach out to us and they want to do something to show their togetherness with our station and we're going to march with the community here today. 
that shows the unity between the community and the police department. Today is a day about unity. Today is about sharing a hurt to our very uh, to our very nation, and I look forward to having a great day marching in unison. This is a, a way for this community to heal, to unite, and we're doing so with our local NAACP chapter, our state senator who's here, shoulder to shoulder, lock and step with our community-based organizations, with our law enforcement partners. Everybody take a knee. LAPD, officers, everyone take a knee. We will march until victory has come. We will cry out. We will march. We will stay strong. Amen. Amen. I'm smiling under here. There is a problem in the world and we just want everyone to see it how the black community sees it and to open their mind to for change and to know that things can get better and we want them to want things to get better along with us. We need each other to call out the um, injustices, not only here in this region, but throughout our country. And we're doing so alongside LAPD, which is fantastic. I love my police officers in the Harbor Division, but I also want to make sure that everybody is treated fairly and equally. And I'm afraid that black people have not been. I'm hoping this will lead to a larger discussion and larger solutions that can be put into action. Our goal is to let the community know that we're working with the police department and we want fairness out of all of this. We want change like everyone wants it. There is change coming. And you young people, the young people, you guys can make the change because in our generation, I'm 60 years old, in our generation, we didn't do it. But you guys don't believe in the white, the, all this stuff. Everybody is one. That's what this generation believes in. The millenniums, more power to you, and I mean that too. Deep Tech Los Angeles brings the rave online. The Sweat Spot LA offers dance lessons, and Allowed Podcasts on LAPL has something for everyone. All this up next on Virtual Things to Do. Have you checked out Allowed Podcasts from the LA Public Library yet? These podcasts are recorded live in Los Angeles Central Library's Mark Taper Auditorium as part of the award-winning Allowed at Central Library speaker series presented by the Library Foundation of Los Angeles. Writers, artists, important thinkers, historians, and more contribute to this eclectic library of recordings. Allowed podcasts are updated on a weekly basis. Find the topics that you're passionate about online with the Allowed podcasts from the Los Angeles Public Library. Visit lapl.org collections. The Sweat Spot is Ryan Heffington's warm and welcoming dance studio in the heart of Silver Lake. In a hub of the East Side Arts community, Sweat Spot LA's classes include ballet, contemporary, modern, jazz, hip hop, dance fitness, gaga, pilates, and a variety of emerging dance styles, and fitness classes specific to the 19 amazing teachers and choreographers. All are welcome to spend some time at the Sweat Spot. For more information about online classes, visit thesweatspotla.com. Every third Thursday of the month, check out Deep Tech Los Angeles show on Frisky Radio, hosted by Placebo EFX. Frisky is a global underground electronic music service with the world's largest catalog of exclusive curated DJ mix sets from artists and DJs around the world. Frisky is the only music service of its kind. Get in your steps or dance like there's nobody watching. Explore Deep Tech Los Angeles at friskyradio.com. And that's a look at some virtual things to do. That's it for this edition. I'm Saida Pagan. From all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week.